Hey, welcome back everyone. Today I'm back doing some work on the uh, active suspension project. Uh, if you haven't seen my previous videos, I'd already built a functioning RC car which uh, used hobby servo actuators uh, that did some simple performance enhancements like uh, leaning the chassis into turns and some basic uh, chassis leveling front to rear. Uh, but that simple type of control is not really why I built this thing. Uh, I wanted to get some hands-on uh, experience implementing a performance-based active suspension control algorithm. Um, you can find research papers filled with uh, endless types of active suspension designs, uh, different control theories, and results from tests performed on lab equipment, but I can't really find any detailed information regarding a real-world uh, implementation of an active suspension. So for this prototype, I'm first going to start with the uh, simplest and oldest approach to active suspension control, and that's the uh, rules-based uh, skyhook and groundhook controllers. I'll start with skyhook because it's easier to understand and is the basis for groundhook. Uh, this diagram depicts a single wheel of an automobile where the box is the sprung mass and the circle is the unsprung mass of the car. As the car encounters a bump, the normal force from the ground will push up on the wheel and with the passive suspension, it's going to be the job of the spring and the damper to actually absorb this force. If the goal of the car is uh, passenger comfort, that spring and damper will most likely need to be very soft. But a passive suspension can only be so soft as it needs to hold up the weight of the car. Uh, but the goal of skyhook control is to make the suspension act even softer, uh, which means minimizing the displacement of the sprung mass or the body of the car. Skyhook pretends that the sprung mass is actually held up on a hook fixed to the sky and that we generate a proportional force with an actuator to counteract the normal force pushing up on the car, thereby ideally keeping the sprung mass in the same relative position and attitude. This slide shows the actual algorithm for Skyhook. Simply stated, if the sprung and unsprung masses are moving away from each other, we need to apply the force via the actuator proportional to the delta of the velocity of the sprung and the unsprung masses. Otherwise, if the masses are moving towards each other, we won't apply any actuator force. So back to this diagram, and let's talk about ground hook, Skyhook's performance-based counterpart. A typical performance-oriented passive suspension is going to be very stiff to help minimize uh, weight transfer and maximize the normal force acting on each tire. Uh, similarly, the uh, goal of ground hook is to keep the tire in contact with the ground and maximize that normal force acting on each wheel. Uh, similar to sky hook, the ground hook is an imaginary hook between the uh, ground and the actual unsprung mass. As a result of the actuator pushing down on that unsprung mass, as that unsprung mass encounters a bump, the sprung mass will eventually be actually accelerated due to Newton's third law. So ground hook uh, must strike a compromise between uh, maximizing the force at the tires themselves, but not imparting so much energy to the sprung mass. Now, what's great about a performance-oriented active suspension is that uh, we can run a relatively soft past a suspension system that maximizes grip for high frequency disturbances, but uses the active suspension to minimize the weight transfer and handle lower frequency disturbances uh, like wheel hop. So an active suspension doesn't necessarily have to operate in an extremely broad range of frequencies uh, to improve a car's handling. So in this slide, we're gonna take a look at the algorithm for ground hook. Uh, when the sprung and unsprung masses are moving towards one another, uh, the controller will apply a proportional force to the unsprung mass via the actuator. If the sprung and unsprung masses are moving away from each other, the actuator will actually apply zero force. Again, these are ideal scenarios and any real system will have uh, limitations such as actuator strength, travel limits, responsiveness, lag and feedback, etc. Obviously, uh, let me know in the comments if I'm missing anything or have any of this wrong. Um, I've done my best to try to assimilate all this together uh, from a lot of the papers that I've been able to read online. So quickly, let's just talk a little bit about force. Uh, 
Um, if you notice, both of these controllers uh, modulate the force of the actuator, uh, but this RC car has servos, which are a position-based actuator, uh, meaning I can't tell one of these servos to apply a force of 20 newtons, uh, but instead I have to give it a position uh, zero through 270 degrees. In this design, I have a spring and a shock absorber between the control arm and the servo, which I know isn't ideal, but for now let's disregard the shock absorber's effect. As I previously stated, these shocks are valved very soft. So if you look at this diagram, you can see the servo is directly attached to the spring, which acts on the lower control arm and the wheel. On the lower control arm, there is an encoder which reads the deflection angle of the arm. And because we're controlling the servo's position, we also know the angle of the servo. If we can control the relationship between the servo angle and the control arm's angle, then we can control the amount of compressive force essentially acting on the car as it encounters road disturbances. The equation you see here uh, with theta sub zero and theta sub encoder, that encapsulates the relationship between the actual control arm angle and the servo angle, where alpha is going to be the desired increase or decrease in the spring force uh, relative to the static compression of the spring. This slide shows three possible states for alpha. Uh, when alpha is negative, more force will be provided by the servo to the wheel, i.e. the spring will be more compressed. Uh, when alpha is zero, uh, no actuator force will be provided and the spring will be kept at a constant uh, level of compression that is essentially only the, the gravitational compression from the weight of the car. And if alpha is positive, then the spring force will actually be decreased and the servo will essentially be lifting the spring. Now, is this force control approach going to actually work? Uh, that I don't actually know. Um, this is obviously a simplification of the full implementation. Um, I'm doing a lot of uh, linear interpolation so that I didn't have to work back through the full kinematic model. So after months of uh, monkeying around with this, I finally just loaded my code onto my prototype uh, RC car and went out for a test run to see if I could tune the suspension, hopefully just by driving it around. Too easy to see in that clip, but I'll tell you right now, uh, the suspension was not working well at all. Uh, the car behaved uh, very erratically, and the handling was uh, quite uh, surprisingly bad. Uh, and the data logging uh, showed that uh, I have a bunch of uh, issues to deal with. Uh, the biggest problem I'm facing right now is how to best measure the vertical velocity of the chassis. Uh, I'm using an ultra cheap uh, nine axis MPU 9250 IMU to measure the vertical acceleration and subsequently the uh, derive the velocity. One of the biggest uh, challenges of IMUs in general is that to accurately measure uh, vertical acceleration or any acceleration really if you're on a tilt, um, 
you must remove the component of acceleration due to gravity. Sadly, the sensor or the Arduino library uh, doesn't do such a great job of this as the sensor tends to have around a 0.5 G acceleration uh, on the z-axis even after uh, calibration, uh, but it works relatively well on the other axis. So I have to dig into this library a bit and I think I'm going to order a second and maybe even a third MPU 9250 to test. Um, even the raw values coming from the z-accelerometer uh, aren't looking right. So I think there might be something up with my chip or it's some sort of uh, knockoff uh, of the real chip. I'd love to get my hands on a better IMU, but uh, right now there's a global chip shortage and in particular IMUs are uh, just not available, especially the uh, Bosch uh, BNO 55s and all that stuff. I'm also looking at a LiDAR sensor or even an array of LiDAR sensors. Uh, which could be used to measure the chassis velocity relative to the ground. Um, I think I could make this work on pavement, but I'm fairly certain the data would be far too messy uh, off-road. Um, the other aspect I'm fighting with is just being able to properly tune and isolate issues with the suspension. Um, the real world lacks repeatability, so I need a test rig that can simulate uh, particular real world conditions. So I've uh, designed up a rudimentary uh, chassis shaker rig that uh, would hopefully aid in testing, uh, but obviously it's not a small undertaking to uh, set up this whole uh, test rig in and of itself. So I want to play with uh, the suspension a little bit before I go about building all of that. Uh, so as you can see, I've got plenty of work still on this project. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed this uh, short introduction into active suspension control theory. It's uh, by no means uh, comprehensive. I'm just kind of scraping the surface here, trying to get a semi-working prototype uh, before I move on to more complicated uh, controller schemes. So thanks for watching and uh, stay safe out there.